news on, on J.I. yesterday. How, oh. how relieved were you and, and happy for that young man? No, I'm so happy. It's such a blessing that, that day he came out, you know, with, with just, you know, not major, major, major injury. So to see him out here on the floor with us, just being able to walk through some things, I think it, it's, it's just great um, for what he's been through and to be able to bounce back from that. How's he and both Paolo doing? You know, did you look at well, J.I. Won't, you know, won't go tonight. Paolo's going to try to get a little bit of work in here to see how he's feeling, uh, and then he'll be more of a game-time decision than anything. J.I. told us he won't play tonight, but he yeah. feels good about being able to play more games soon. Is that a testament to the work he's put in? Oh, I mean, it's a testament to him. It's a testament to our performance staff, you know, what they've done with him. Uh, I think it's just, it's tremendous the job that they do. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to stay on top of everything. They do a tremendous job of, of getting these guys right back to get to the floor. We were just talking with Wendell. What is, obviously, just one game, small sample size, but what did you think of that starting lineup with Wendell and Goga playing together? I mean, I, I, I thought it was good. I, I thought we did a great job protecting the rim early. Uh, we were physical, you know, we hit them early on. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was a good small sample size, but good for the moment that we had it. Yes. You know, obviously that was the first time they played together in a game, but you guys used tons of different. Is that just a sign of how many different lineups you guys can have been working on, even though we haven't seen it on TV in, in, in a game? Absolutely. I think that we have such a great group of high basketball IQ guys that understand what the game plan is night to night. Now, it's going to be dependent on matchups in certain situations, uh, but any lineup that we put out there, they've learned and worked with a level of chemistry and camaraderie that they, can, they know how to play off of each other, both offensively and defensively. How, how important is that adaptability to be able to kind of throw out you know, some, some funky lineups, maybe not funky lineups, but throw out some, some lineups that maybe haven't been used before? and to be able to adapt quickly, especially as you're getting ready for you know, maybe a playoff series yeah. where there's going to be those matchups that you have to try and try to well, I think the faster you can get that learning curve, you know, speed up that learning curve is huge. And I, again, I think it's just such a testament to our, our guys' basketball IQ, one, but two, the coaches. They, uh, they do a tremendous job of getting these guys prepared to be put into any situation, whether a guy plays three minutes, four minutes, or he's, you know, running 36 minutes. Being able to play with multiple players and different guys says a lot about this team. And it's, it's also the closeness and the communication that we've constantly talked about having. In, 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 obviously injuries may necessitate some of these, these, mm -hmm. these you know, experiments, whatever you want to call them. How much do you still want to test out certain lineups or test out certain lineups? Or how do you balance doing that while also making sure like, hey, you gotta win games, yeah. you know, we still gotta, we still gotta kind of pick up pick up some things. Well, find, find, no, finding consistency, I think that's the biggest thing. And, and with this group, when we're healthy, there is a, there's more a level of consistency. Uh, when we're not healthy, you're trying to find different, different ways to have re the right rotation, the right matchup. And a lot of times that's dependent on who we play. Like you look at the Atlanta game and what they started, you know, those two bigs uh, with Johnson being what he is and then you had Capella, they felt the matchup was the right matchup in that moment. Um, it's going to be different on different nights with different guys. Markel came off the bench. Is that something you could see him doing more of in the future, or was that more of just how the game was? One, how the game's going, but also, you know, bringing guys back up to speed, bringing them off the bench is a little bit easier to do uh, with timing, you know, with, with the minutes restriction, being able to control those minutes when they're in the game, uh, letting them get themselves get back acclimated to the rhythm, and like we're talking about the chemistry of the team, not being able to throw it out with too many different lineups, but just enough where there's a level of consistency and rhythm to the group. Let's talk about Gogo and Wendell playing alongside each other. Markel and Cole, what did you make of them playing alongside each other? They've played together before, and I think that but it just hasn't been often this year. And so what I think is just finding the times to do that with limited practice times, we have to sprinkle it in moment to moment. Then we have some sample size on film, you have some sample size with the numbers that you can go back and look and see, you know, how it works and the adjustments we need to make moving forward. In a couple of weeks, Wendell is going to be hosting his second annual yeah. Cocktail fundraiser. Yeah. I know you're obviously out in the community mm -hmm. all the time. When you hear that he's doing this particular event again to raise money, it's it's phenomenal. I think these guys do such a tremendous job of being in the community, uh, caring for those around them, giving back. Uh, I mean, I think the more we have a group of guys that serve and care and want to give back to, to others, that's who this group is and that's who we have to continue to be as an organization. You, know, you, you look at this Nets team, you've got the best players. What, what are some of the things that stand out that, that they do well that you want to take away? 
Well, offensively, you know, the three-point shooting is, is the number one thing. You know, they, they, they shoot and they, they and make a lot of threes. So I think our ability to t defend the three-point line, one-on-one -on -one defense is going to be huge. Uh, they have guys that are able to attack, get downhill, and create for others. Uh, Mikel Bridges is doing a great job right now. Them adding Schroeder to the mix, uh, you know, creates a lot of matchup situations for us. But their small ball lineup, we got to make sure we're focused on. But our ability to defend without fouling, defend the three-point line, and again, it go, it's always going to come back to can we defensive rebound the right way to end possessions. Obviously, having seen these guys since, mm -hmm. the since December, I don't know how much you can look back at that tape. They're obviously a different team, but when you look back and think about those games, how far do you feel like this that your group has come since the last time you saw Brooklyn and, and even like Utah and Utah coming up next? Well, I think it's a great you know, reflection to go back and look at exactly what, what, what we did versus them the first time because there's some of the same same guys on the team and knowing what they're capable of doing, we said, so but where we have grown, you know, our, our poise, our maturity level, our ability to understand the moment, uh, I think that's what's grown in, di in a different way. And Utah's playing very good basketball as well, but tonight we'll focus on Brooklyn and what we need to do to take care of this game. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. Appreciate you all. Well, how, how good is it to be back home after All-Star break, after going through you know, a road trip to, to be back home and have a game? Yeah, it's always good being back at the crib, um, especially that last road trip we had was kind of brutal, in my opinion, even though it was just three games. Um, but um, well, we're finally back home for, for like a week and a half, or like a week, so I'll take it. You know, when you look at this Nets team you'll play tonight, what are some of the challenges, what are some of the key focuses for your group tonight against them? Um, well, Obviously, last game we played them, they, they gave us a good whooping. So, um, you know, I, that's something that we, none of us ever forgot. Um, so, you know, we, we look at that as, as a game just to get back at them. Um, and it just gives us a, 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 another reason to play the game. You know, we, well, one thing I feel like a lot of players sometimes struggle with is, you know, staying up for every game. An 82 game season is hard to be locked in for every single game. So, you know, that's a great opportunity for us to just get a get back game. and it, Puts a little bit more, you know, oh, into the game. I know there's, there, there might be some motivation because the way Brooklyn beat you guys both both times, but yeah. this is obviously a long time ago in the season. How much do you do you look back at uh, look back at those uh, at those games to kind of find things? And how, you know, when you look back, if you do look back at those games, how, how different do you feel you guys are compared to where you were back then? Oh um, well, we're a lot more healthy now. I don't yeah. think I was even available for either one of those games, so. Uh, just me being back out there, I think, is going to make a big difference for us. And then, um, also, you know, we got guys who you know, are really competitive. So, you know, the fact that they won those first two games just gives us a little bit more juice going into this game. So, you know, we go back, we look at it. Uh, we know they made a couple changes. Um, not much, but they made a couple changes at the, the trade deadline. So, they got a couple different players. But for the most part, we kind of know who the Brooklyn Knicks are and uh, what we got to do to, in order to win the game tonight. These, these next two opponents here, you guys haven't seen them since very, very early in the season. Does does that help, you know, having a kind of completely fresh look at them, or do you do you, do you feel like it's better, you know, like you get to try again on Sunday, you get a team that you've, you've, you've seen pretty recently? Uh, you know, it's kind of on the line about it. Um, you know, it's it's good to, you know, be able to play teams like close in terms of uh, the date, but, you know, when you play them uh, with a far enough gap, I mean, it's kind of the same. You know, we kind of stay up for every game, so um, I feel like it don't really, you know, affect us as much. You know. The fact that Tay is seemingly okay, just how big of a relief was that in the locker room for you guys? Man, it was a big relief. Just the fact that he was able to get up and walk off the court. Um, you know, I, I was definitely scared. I think I can speak for all my teammates and my coaches when uh, we saw him go down, but, um, you know, just to see that he's up, moving around, um, you know, we can't ask for much more. We're just glad that he's healthy. Obviously, the last game was sort of a unique situation where Kyle doesn't play and a couple other guys not available. What did you make of that starting lineup? Starting against, starting alongside Gogo. We haven't seen yeah. that before. It was tough. Um, just because we haven't never seen it before. Like us, never been on a court at the same time ever. So, um, you know, it was a it was a, a chance that we had and. I don't know. I feel like with more practice, more time together, we will be a lot better. But uh, it was definitely different. Yeah, it's such a small sample size. Obviously, yeah. literally one game. Exactly. In that game, just a handful of minutes. But yeah. what did you make of playing alongside Goga and the type of player he is? I mean, Goga is a phenomenal player. Like he works hard. He does all the little things to help his team win. So um, you know, it kind of makes everything else a little bit easier, especially on the defensive end.
Um, he just plays the game the right way. And it's always easy to play with guys who just play the game the right way. On March 11th, you're going to be hosting a fundraiser at the Top Golf. Can you just talk about that event and what um, yeah, that's my second annual Top Golf event. Um, and it's just about raising raising money for for some of the, the causes that I'm, I'm involved in. Uh, you know, I feel like it's just a great opportunity to just kind of bring everyone together and just kind of uh, continue to just tell people what, what else that I'm doing. You know, the, the more initiatives that we're, we're doing, you know, as a, as a group, um, just a lot of credit to my foundation manager and my mom. They kind of been spearheading it, you know, especially during the season when I'm really busy. So, uh, you know, just keeping everybody up to date, uh, just showing everybody, you know, kind of what we're doing, and also just you know, time just to relax, play some golf, have fun, just chop it up. Did the success of it last year make you want to do it again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, it's tough, you know, to do things during the season. Um, so I definitely want to find a way where I can do something similar to this in the off season, where I'm able to be all hands on, eyes on, and uh, be more involved. That's the same thing. Uh, it needs a lot of work. <laughs> it needs a lot of work. <laughs> yep. Appreciate y'all. Degrees of flexion, so feeling good. Uh, again, just gonna take it day by day, but I feel good. You know, you, you've done so much work, and right? Strengthening areas and you're doing everything. Do you, you think that helped you in that moment that that you know you put so for much sure. work in? For sure. For sure. I think. I think you know this is the best case scenario that it could have been. Um, Again, once I once I went down, I was like, okay, I, I knew that it wasn't a twist. I'm like, you know, I'm strong. And even hearing, you know, the doctors checking out the MRI saying, you know, he's strong, everything is good. So, again, praise God, I feel good and just ready to keep moving. Do you feel like, you know, you've been through so much. Do you feel like you have a good sense of how your body's feeling? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, 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 I would have knew right away. And then once I was able to get up and kind of walk off the court, I'm like, you know, I don't got nothing to be worried about. With, with, you know, with, with everything you've gone through, Uh, just a day by day thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely still a little sore, um, so just kind of take it day by day there. But I, I don't see foresee this being a you know a multiple game missed you know uh, injury. It's clearly going to be a group this week, but how do you feel about potentially playing tonight? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play tonight. Um, really, the, the focus is for Thursday most likely, and so we'll just go from there. Obviously, you've been an important piece defensively in the games you've been able to play. Yeah. How do you feel about your availability down the stretch of the season and how important is that defense? Honestly, I feel great. You know, I definitely you know think I'm a, a you know big part of the team in terms of you know helping helping win games and like you talked about defense and being available. I feel great about it. I don't I don't see this as really a setback at all. Just a, you know a bit of a sore knee, and I'll just take it day by day. And I feel good about Thursday, and we'll see. You know, obviously when you're on the court, you're being challenged. You're being you're asked to defend some of the top opposing players. Yeah. Now that you've been able to be available for you know 40 games or so, is that kind of what you envision as your NBA career? I would say yeah. I mean, you know, even to a high level, I, I feel like I'm still getting back to myself. Um, I'm still seeing things before my body's reacting, so I'm, I'm, I'm slightly catching up, but I'm still getting there. When you're guarding more perimeter oriented players versus guys yeah. from court, does your mindset change at all? Is it more of a second? Yeah, for sure. A lot of chasing over screens, um, trying to be physical early so you know I don't get hit by screens. But definitely when you know when they don't have necessarily a, a premier big or, or forward, you know most of the time I get focused on the guard. So I just try my best to stay with them, uh, navigate screens well, and just be physical. You know, you know how important this time of year is. You've, you've been part of a team that's gone through a big run. How how eager are you to, to, to be a part of it again? And, Help this, you know, a new group kind of yeah. go through. Go through. Now this is it. This, this is the this is the part of the season that matters. You know, uh, we dropped one at Atlanta. We felt that. We feel it. Uh, we know that tonight's important and continue to roll through this this back half of the season. It's important. So uh, we're locked in. Jonathan, you you've always taken pride in your defense and you came into the league. But when you look at the defensive numbers and where you stack and how much of a difference you make, just how much you know pride you take in the fact that. It's translating here the way you care, you know, actually. Well, I don't really know how I stack up in terms of the, like league numbers or percentages or whatnot. But again, I just I just try my best to do, you know, do my job each night and, uh, you know, make plays and it, it translates and it helps the team win games. So I'm all for it and just uh, continue to just try to get better and, and do it on a consistent basis. Cool. Josh is a great